Tonight, I'm gonna pair up these Apple peripherals with this Google tablet. Ah, blasphemy! Now, actually, it's pretty easy to do. What I've got here is an Apple Bluetooth wireless keyboard and an Apple Bluetooth Magic Trackpad, I think they call it. And uh, what I got here is a Nexus 7 from Google. They're very easy to pair up and they work together very nicely. But I think you could do any Bluetooth keyboard or about any Bluetooth device. But I'm showing you these because these are what I own. First, to get started, we would just get this in Bluetooth discovery mode. And you just do that by pressing the power key down and holding it like 5 to 10 seconds until you see a little green LED flashing like up here in the corner. I'm not going to do that because I've already paired these up. Um, and you do the same thing with the trackpad, same procedure. Once the thing is in Bluetooth discovery mode, then everything is up to the Nexus 7. Can you see that? No, let's focus in. Um, so on the Nexus 7, we would just simply come into our settings and we would look at the Bluetooth and we would search for devices. At that time, it would discover these two devices and you would click on them to complete the pairing. There's just some simple directions telling you how to put in the pin numbers and things like this uh, to finish off your pairing. And bingo, you can start to use them. I'm going to show you the trackpad because that actually surprised me. It was pretty cool. Um, so, what's cool about it? Well, when you move around, you have like this new little mouse cursor that uh, unless you've hooked up a mouse or some kind of pointing device, you probably have never seen before. When you click with that device, you get a like a little dot appears momentarily and uh, that, sim that shows like your simulated click. And uh, so it's kind of cool. Um, also that was kind of cool about this is um, that it does support multi-touch. I was really impressed with that. I tried that just a few minutes ago. With Maps, you know, that's a good application where you have some multi-touch going on. I can pinch to zoom in and out. I can do rotations. I think I can do rotations. So I can do these different gestures and of course I can swipe back and forth. You can do the same thing, the easy swipe back and forth with the trackpad. If you put two fingers down, now you can get uh, the um, a ability to pinch to zoom and rotate. What was really cool here is these unsuspecting houses. Um, I'm going to really get them. Hopefully we can see that. Yeah, it's on the camera. So there's one dot, there's two dots, there's three, four, five, six, seven. So apparently this trackpad thing can really put on the, uh, the touch points here. And I just thought that kind of looked cool because it looks like there's like these UFOs or something taking over the neighborhood. Ah! No. Um, it was kind of cool. I don't know how useful that is. I don't think the software supports like seven point touch on maps. What would that do? I don't know. Um, the last thing I want to show is a little bit of the keyboard. Obviously the keyboard will work with all of your apps and stuff. Like it's, that's not a big deal. The keyboard Duh. Like if you're using Gmail or whatever, or Google Docs, of course it's going to work. But it had some cool things that were kind of intuitive. Um, one of them being like just things that you do every day. Like I, I hit the, um, the command tab and it brought up a task switcher. So some of the things probably already work here a little bit. Hitting escape blows out of the application. So that was kind of cool. Um, I'm wondering if anything else works on the, like if it's wired over... I'm trying some of the function keys just to see if they do anything. Um, that was function three. I'm going to put it into hibernation probably. That's kind of cool. Um, I just hit the play on my media and it brought up um, music. So that's kind of cool. And I can pause in and out, and it looks like I can probably switch tracks back and forth. Those were the media keys on the keyboard. So, um, kind of cool. I didn't even know that existed. So, uh, a lot of intuitive things in there, apparently. The last part, I'm going to get my geek on a little bit. And we are going to bring up a terminal. This is a cool program. This is Air Terminal. It supports, like, transparency. Um, it has a couple bugs, though, on the Nexus 7. So, don't go maybe and buy it. I don't know. There's a few things... It still works fine. There's just a couple issues with it. It's a good, it's a really cool program. It has multi-tab windows. Um, it has, you can move these windows around. 
It's really cool. It's a, it's a cool program. Anyway, I'm going to get my terminal geekiness on. So I'm just going to SSH over to one of my machines. And what I wanted to show here is if I take a file, I don't know if this is still on the screen or not. No, it's not. Um, so one of the things in, when you work in a terminal and you're a geek like me is tab complete. And when I hit the tab, it gives me the things that are left there. I'm running a bash shell and bingo. So tab complete totally works on this. I was like so stoked. I could actually use this at work and to do things with. So that was kind of cool. Um, that's the total geek portion of the review. Um, that is about all I had to show. I'm not gonna show games. I am gonna try a PS3 controller um, and see how that works, but that I'm gonna save for another installment. So keep watching. Peace.